<laughs> but the uh, when, so, when J.P. Morgan attacked uh, Bear Stearns a couple of years ago during that fake crisis of 2008 that they manufactured, they inherited a three billion short position on silver, and uh, they've been keeping it on their books all this time, trying to you know dodge and hide and joke and jive and not right report in this quarter. And, Meanwhile, we are taking some physical off the market, and as we take that physical off the market, the price, of course, uh, appreciates. When this thing got started uh, back uh, 18 months ago or so, the price of silver was about $26 an ounce. Uh, thanks to the uh, crash J.P. Morgan uh, buy silver campaign, the price got up to 50. Uh, then it got pulled back. There was a massive attack. They used basically. Uh, naked short sales. They use weapons of mass financial destruction. They, 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 they kill the price. Uh, they attack the price. Uh, but nevertheless, the silver is at the base of the entire Ponzi scheme that is Morgan. It is uh, really the collateral upon which this massive inverted pyramid of fraud sits. And uh, with every ounce that's taken off the market, you're taking 100 to 200 dollars or more. Uh, attacking their balance sheet. And here's the great thing about it, ladies and gentlemen, is once this bank crashes and it sets in motion a chain reaction crashing banks all over Wall Street and all over the world, destroying the paper policy scheme, the dollar crashes, silver's at $500, we've got the money, now they can say, fuck you! <laughs> and they're holding the worthless crap. Here's some other really good news. I love to uh, keep track of all the news as it comes over the tape, all the excitement. <laughs> Sometimes you have to look far afield to get your good news. This is out of China. Here's the headline. Death penalty for bankers. Woo! We've already got a death penalty, let's use it! <laughs> so, uh, in China, uh, this woman was caught defrauding investors out of uh, 57 or $37 million. So the state thought it would be a good idea to execute her. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is called a deterrent. <laughs> Uh, that's exactly what's missing from the system today, is that we have no adequate deterrence. Uh, when someone like Diamond steals a billion point two from MF Global, I mean, that was outright theft. And this is where everybody in this room should be concerned, because it's no longer just bankers ripping off bankers, but bankers ripping off retail customers from MF Global. They reached into the balance sheet of this bank and stole $1.2 billion from segregated accounts. These are accounts that could have been at your J.P. Morgan Chase bank account. And as this thing collapses, don't kid yourself, they will be looking at these accounts and taking this money out of your account and they will claim things like, well, it's in the best interest of the banking system, otherwise there would be a systemic collapse it's a national security, uh, we needed to provide liquidity, we're making a market, those are all euphemisms for fuck you, we got ours, now fucking die in the mud, you bastard. And that's the kind of, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's uh, completely intolerable. So China, yeah. of course, being progressive, a uh, progressive communist state, figured out that, you know, why don't we just kill these fuckers? Yeah! Yeah! And, uh, you know, they, they, they mention in here that this uh, woman, uh, Wu Ying, you know, it's appropriate here we are in Chinatown. I just thought of it. <laughs> yeah, of course. They, they got the best act in town right here, my show, and they're killing bankers. Okay. So, uh,